Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all new M2 iPad Pro, and I've been using it full time for a week. When I'm not editing a video, I'm typically using this device if I'm on the go or at home just relaxing to either watch videos, write notes, and more. And so I wanted to talk about the experience one week later. Now, the overall design is basically the exact same as last year's. It feels familiar. There's no difference as far as the weight or dimensions or anything else. In fact, it's so similar that this is the first year in a long time I've actually picked up the silver color and I did that just to differentiate it from last year's model so I could easily tell the difference because otherwise they're the exact same so as far as the design dimensions and everything else they're identical in every single way it's more of an internal update than anything else and so price wise and everything else is the same but the good thing about that is you can use your existing accessories I've been using the magic keyboard with it typically and this I've been using for the past year it's a little bit beaten up as I use it every day has some stains here and there and it works fine. It doesn't have the function row, just like the new iPad keyboard does, but it does work well. The trackpad still works and everything else. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But other than that, the design is exactly the same. It's identical in every way. And if you didn't use an Apple pencil, you probably wouldn't know the difference between the two of them. However, one of the new major standout features is Apple pencil hover. Now I will say that hover actually is more useful than I thought it would be. It's not just for artists. It's for selecting different items. As I bring the pencil closer, you'll see that the icon increases in size, letting me know what icon I'm actually going to use or interact with. So it's really nice, but you have to get pretty close to that. In fact, let me show you that. If I bring it up close to the display, you'll see it will start to interact at about maybe almost a centimeter, maybe half a centimeter, or maybe about a half an inch or so. So oftentimes I find that I tap icons by accident. However, if you're an artist, this can be very, very useful. So we'll go into notes within notes. If I bring up the pencil selector, we'll just select something maybe a little bit bigger here and select this one. We'll select red. And as I get close to the display, you can see that it's available on the display. It shows me where I'm going to set the pencil. This is not unlike what you get on maybe a Microsoft surface or a Samsung tablet, but it does work really well and is great for artists to know exactly where they're going to set down the pencil. So if we switch and let's switch to a fountain pen here, if we switch to a fountain pen, you get a little mark there to let you know where it is. And then if we write Zolotech, you can see it's written with a fountain pen. So it works just like you'd think. It's a nice little interaction and something I know a lot of artists wanted as it makes things much easier to know exactly where you're going to press your pen down instead of hitting undo over and over. And more and more apps are supporting this and we'll see this updated in the future as well. But if you're a creator and maybe you're using Procreate or other apps, many of them are already updated. So that's a great thing for the pencil itself if you use that. However, if you don't, well, it's not that big of an upgrade. The display, of course, is an incredible display. It goes up to 1600 nits of brightness. It's mini LED backlit. It's probably the best display that Apple makes as far as brightness and consistency, as far as colors and more. The iPhone display is great and definitely brighter, but with consistent colors and reference modes and more, this is an incredible tool to use with a Mac. Maybe when you're creating a video like this, you can see what it will look like on this display and it's really helpful. So if we go into display and brightness, we have these reference modes. It changes to sort of a neutral color tone and works well. I've been using the older iPad on a stand next to my Mac studio to sort of see what videos will look like on YouTube. So if you're watching them through that, hopefully the color improves by using this, but I've been trying that out, extending the display to here with different things such as sidecar. So it's great to have that option, but it's no different than before. The big thing that's different in theory is the M2 processor. We again have 16 gigs of Ram. If you have the one or two terabyte options, this is the one terabyte option. It gives you a hundred gigabytes a second memory bandwidth, ProRes encode and decode engines, as well as hardware accelerated ProRes and ProRes raw over the last generation. So those additional things have been added with the M2. The same is true with the M2 on the MacBook air and MacBook pro. And so it's great that it's here, but if you're not editing video, it doesn't matter even a little bit. So if you don't edit video with the iPad, it's not worth upgrading. And the reason I say that is in using the M2 iPad pro, I've noticed no difference in everyday use, no speed differences, whether I'm using split view or maybe even slide over none of 
the things seem to really phase this processor. And that's a good thing. It's super fast, but it's not necessarily worth upgrading from an M1 to an M2. If you had an older iPad, sure, you could definitely see a speed difference. But from an M1 to an M2, there's zero reason as far as regular use other than maybe video editing that I've actually experienced a reason to upgrade for. Maybe someone else is using an extreme case or maybe with the external monitor support when that's added later on, we could see a big difference. But right now, if you have an M1, it's hard to justify the M2 other than a couple different reasons. And one odd choice that Apple has made is they've added ProRes to the camera, but you can only use it when you're using a third party app. So if you use an app such as Filmic Pro, we'll just put the iPhone behind here to make it seem like something's in frame. We go to our settings, go to our resolution. You'll see we have ProRes as an option. We have ProRes 2020, 709 and 8-bit. So those are options, but within third-party apps, they're not available in the main camera app like they are on an iPhone. I'm not sure why Apple decided that, but they haven't put them in there at all. So if you go into your recording modes, there's just nothing there. They've decided to put that in third-party apps, and that's probably fair in some ways, but inconsistent across the OSs. So it's fair in the sense that most people aren't using this for video, but if you are and maybe planning out a movie set and you want to kind of get an idea of what things would look like, it'd be nice to just hit the normal camera app and do that instead of going into Filmic Pro. But if you want to use it for serious filming, which I know some people do, I use the iPhone when I'm outside typically, you have that option, but it's not something most people are going to do. The other change this year is yes, we have a cellular modem option. This one has that and it doesn't have GSM slash edge support. So it supports GSM, but not the edge variant, meaning 2G basically. That's no longer supported in this iPad as opposed to the last one. That really shouldn't be a problem anywhere though. But we do have 5G with 5G millimeter wave and things if you have that support in your area. But otherwise, everything else on this is the same. In fact, battery life does seem to be a little bit better, but it is a newer battery. So if we go to battery, this is on the public version. I have this on iOS 16. Point one or iPad OS 16.1. It is not on a beta. I have that on the other iPad. You'll see that it was last charged. Well, a few days ago as of recording this, you'll see it was a couple days ago. It was charged to hundred percent. So if we go back to that day, I used it for two hours and 29 minutes, then four hours and four minutes. And then today, 20 minutes, and we're down to 18%. So if we add those all up, we're getting about six and a half to seven hours. So I probably have another hour or so. It's a little bit better than what I was getting on the previous version or the previous iPad, but not anything phenomenal. However, Apple does say you get up to nine hours of battery life, about seven to eight. So that's okay. That's fair depending on the apps you're using. So it seems to be about the same, no huge increases there. Now for me, the big letdown this year, so far anyway, is the lack of software. We're going to get DaVinci Resolve in the app store. We don't have it yet, at least at the time of filming this video, but we won't have Final Cut Pro. Why, I'm not sure. It's something this is capable of. I would love to see Final Cut on here. And yes, we have LumaFusion, and I do have that on here. We have LumaFusion that's fully capable of editing, of course, but we don't have Final Cut Pro, something I'm really familiar with, that I've invested a lot of time in learning on the Mac, and maybe it's something they'll add later. But Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, and those things right there, I would use this 100% full time instead of a Mac Studio. I would rather edit using touch than using a keyboard and mouse or a trackpad. So that's something I would love to try in the future if they ever add that. And I've been considering learning LumaFusion a little bit more just to maybe edit faster. But either way, this is not a huge upgrade over last year, except for Hover. But the nice thing is I can use my Magic Keyboard it will fit just fine. It's got the same cutout and everything. So if we just snap it into place, all of the magnets are in the same place. You'll see it's in place, locked in place there, protected and works well. So it's great that I can use the same accessory. I don't have to buy the expensive keyboard. Although I do have one complaint about the keyboard this year and that it didn't get an update with some of the function keys that the traditional iPad keyboard got this year. The regular iPad got this keyboard update and we didn't get anything like that for the iPad Pro. Maybe they're waiting for next year with a full redesign, but either way, I would love to have these function keys even if they charge the same price again, I'd love to have the function key option, at least for most people. It definitely helps instead of swiping in and going into different things and controlling it that way. Most people have gotten used to it, but I would love to see the option for this. 
Other than that though, if you're wondering if you should upgrade from the previous iPad at this point, if you have the M one and you don't use the Apple pencil and you don't use ProRes all the time, there's no reason to upgrade. Hold on to your old iPad. It works just fine. In fact, I was very tempted to return this, but I don't like to return things that I've unboxed and reviewed. So this is something that I think is still great. I'm going to use it as a reference display, and then I'll also be using this full time. And I think they're both great, but I really wish this was a bigger upgrade. It's a great upgrade, but nothing leaps and bounds. And that's typically what we see with the Mac world. We'll see a bump in the processor and that's about it. Maybe a few things here and there. So don't expect any major upgrades year over year with iPads. I would definitely buy it if I didn't have a 12.9 inch or even 11 inch, but the 12.9 in my opinion is the best one just because it's a larger display and I prefer that. But if you like the 11, they're both great. But if you have last year's model, I wouldn't upgrade unless you're an artist and use hover or you edit a lot of ProRes video. Otherwise stick with what you've got. They're both great, but let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.